that corporate America is always looking to cut costs and boost its performance. But are companies really doing enough for the actual people who are working to achieve that excellence? Well, one person who says no is former uh, philosophy professor Tom Morris. He's the author of a brand new book, If Aristotle Ran General Motors. And the subtitle on the book is uh, The New Soul of Business. And we're very happy to have you with nice us. Nice to be with you. This morning. All right. It's a very catchy title. If Aristotle were running General Motors, what would he say? Well, he'd put wisdom in the driver's seat, first of all. He'd say that product quality is very important. Process efficiency is necessary, but it's the people who do the work who are the ultimate foundation for long-lasting success. I think Aristotle would get beyond all the management slogans and cliches of the recent past and dig deep into human nature to ask what really motivates people to feel their best about what they're doing as the foundation for doing their best. In the beginning of the book, you say that now more than ever, people need to understand the human condition. What do you think has changed in the last few decades or so to make that the case now? Well, we've got all the baby boomers having their midlife crisis basically at the same time, I think. Uh, people are, are no longer satisfied with just a good paycheck. They want meaningfulness in their lives. They want to hook up their work lives and their personal lives. They want a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction in what they're doing so that if the job doesn't provide for that they won't do their best so would this have worked in the 80s when ser seriously we weren't that's necessarily a, a moral society that's a good question people wouldn't be asking quite as many deep questions as they are now uh, Winston Churchill once said you can always depend on Americans to do the right thing once they've exhausted every other possibility <laughs> I think that's what we're seeing basically having tried everything else in the 80s people are asking the deep philosophical questions about their lives and their businesses now Tom, you were telling us that you give seminars and speeches to so many companies in the Fortune yeah. 500, like Merrill Lynch, like Coca-Cola, right. and you know companies like that. What is the reaction you get when you talk to them about these kind of value issues and philosophical issues and stuff like that? Well, there's a tremendous sense of liberation. I mean, everybody's been talking about business ethics, for example, but too many companies think of ethics as just a way of staying out of trouble. I take them to the ancient Greek philosophers who viewed ethics as a way of creating strength in an organization, uh, with business partners, uh, within a, a person's own soul. And this is a positive spin, a, w a new way of looking at ethics in the recent past. So people feel liberated. They understand for the first time why it's important you know, to do good business. Philosophically, I understand you know what you're saying, but sure. how do companies put this in practice? You gave us these little cards that you have, the four dimensions of human experience, uh, truth, beauty, goodness, and unity, and you right. say you give these out at your yeah. seminars. I mean, how does this work? Well, the ancient thinkers believed that there were certain fundamental dimensions to human experience. We all have a mind, an intellectual dimension. We need truth. A company Companies should honor that. They should ask about policies. Uh, does this uh, uh, favor truth? Is there going to be honesty in the company if we do this? Are we being honest with our suppliers or clients? Beauty in the workplace liberates people's creativity, delighting a customer, having fun at work. Casual Fridays have shown us that already. Uh, goodness, that's the ethical dimension, the foundation for trust and for really strong relationships. And we all know ultimately relationships rule the world. Finally, there's a spiritual dimension, unity, people feeling connected in what they do. All right, let's take a look at some of the, because they're wonderful quotes throughout this entire book. Absolutely terrific. But I, I mean, I love this kind of thing. One of them is from Voltaire. Men, have, men must have corrupted nature a little, for they were not born wolves, but they have become wolves. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you know, there was this book a few years ago, How to Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive. Do we have to be wolves? Do we have to be sharks to do good business? Uh, in the book, I try to argue, no, that the best people end up doing the best business. An unethical person, a wolf, can have a temporary success, uh, maybe a flamboyant success, but it's all always self-destructive in the end. I try to show in this book how the great thinkers have laid the foundation for lasting success. You know, there are so many people who have gotten so um, heartless uh, yeah. or maybe turned to despair by working with all the mm -hmm. layoffs, uh, no more corporate loyalty, mm -hmm. benefits have been cut back and all of that. Uh, what kind of hope do you have? Well, uh, in the recent past, of course, Scott Adams in the Dilbert books has voiced the complaint of, of workers, uh, their plight. And in this new book, If Aristotle Ran General Motors, I try to voice what workers really need, how to turn it around. I've tried to offer in the book a practical framework of ideas that people at every level in corporate life, whether it's the leaders of the company or middle management people or frontline workers, can use these basic ideas to evaluate what they do day to day. We're going to have to move. You've given us a lot to think about. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We've been speaking with Tom Morris, author of a new book, If Aristotle We're Talking to uh, Ran General Motors. <laughs> and we'll be back. We'll be in right a back. The AT&T